Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is episode number 80B, the answer portion of my What Is It Mystery Tools series. And there were a lot of good guesses, a lot of good answers. Take a look through part one or part A and uh, read the comments. I think you'll enjoy it or get a kick out of that. But let's go over these now from what I have done in my research regarding the various answers that people put in the previous video. This is tool number one, and it's a Utica brand, and Utica made a lot of different kinds of pliers. So let me pull off this label here, and you'll see the number under the label. Okay, it's a Utica 750-8 pliers, and I did look up this, and I think I even found the patent, but I, I lost it already. But the purpose of this pliers, and notice there's a little roller on here is to tighten the nuts inside of electrical boxes. To me it's kind of awkward, but as far as I can understand that's what the purpose of it is. I just prefer to use a screwdriver and a hammer. That's how I've always tightened these nuts. How did you do it? I didn't know there was such a thing. And thanks to John DeRosa for sending this. I believe everyone got this one right and I thought it was a riveter probably for harness making and that type of thing. Notice that there's a little anvil here and then right here a little point. Now somebody said this is to be used with hollow rivets so I really don't know. I fiddled around here with some of these tinners rivets and it wouldn't compress them at all so I think their people are correct when they say to use it for hollow rivets. Now these are this is a rivet for brake linings, and I don't believe it's a brake tool. They didn't have bonded brakes yet, I bet, when this was made. But here's another little hollow rivet, so I believe that's what it's for. Correct me if I am wrong, but I do not think that I am. Okay, here's number three from Roger Taylor, and this is some type of wire stripper. And I still do not fully understand this, but several people gave good answers on this. But if you look here, I had covered up this, I believe, Miller T&M Company, Springfield, Massachusetts. And over on the other side, it's a Model 205 Rural C Wire, patent applied for. I have run across an awful lot of different kinds and styles of wire strippers. I suppose some for cable and telephone and I don't know what all. Number four by Stanley Tool Works and this is very hard steel. This is a burnisher. Notice that it's more or less oval shaped and primarily used for cabinet scrapers like this so after you sharpen them that or file them or true them up the whole idea here is with the burnisher you're able to turn the edge and make a hook edge and then you do your scraping and that uh, will smooth the wood most of you have probably used one of these so it's always used in conjunction with this but several people said that burnishers are used by artists and other people as well but I would say the Stanley was was made for this okay this is number five given to me by George thank you George and I have covered up the label here but let's disclose it right now it's a speed collet changer and there's a patent I'll show you the patent drawing at the end here with the still pictures but it uses a little pneumatic butterfly type of a wrench with a three-quarter inch socket which will fit the drawbar of Bridgeport Mills and clones and this goes up and down this is to be mounted on top of a J head maybe other heads as well and so you pull it down and one way will tighten and the other way will loosen. Let's step over to the bridge port and this is going to be very troublesome when I go to mount it because this is a low basement and right above the drawbar on the bridge port is the return air uh, duct. 
So I may have to cut a hole in that. I think that there's about an inch of room here, but I will have to tilt the head to even get the drawbar out of the machine. And I need to get a new drawbar that has a shorter hex on it. So let's step over to the bridge port. I'm over at the bridge port now and this is my spare draw bar and you can see that it's way too long here. So I will either have to get a new draw bar or cut this one off. But the idea here is that the socket on the closer here fits the draw bar. That's three quarter hex. And looking at the top of the machine here is the draw bar, and you can see there isn't a whole lot of room here. I might have to cut a hole in that. But the closure will go up here and mount on top. Not much room, but I think I can make it work. There might be a video on that someday. I found this description in the uh, Google patents for the collet release mechanism for a milling machine. Pause your video if you want to read that. Now here's a couple pictures from the patent office. And it carries a 1988 patent and there's the number and there is the drawing. Here's another picture, and this hex right here is the end of the draw bar. This is the socket. Remember, patent drawings do not always look like the final product. They're a concept. Number six, and this was the bonus, this is a pin, and it's been sheared from a railroad car coupler, and that is the pin that holds the knuckle where they go together like this. Now this came from a grain elevator that has a rail loop a mile long and they load the rail cars with corn and beans here in the Illinois Valley. And that train stops and starts 50 times. So I think they load two cars at a time. But anyway, a man that works there gave this to a friend of mine <laughs> and uh, he said they're all over the place laying between the tracks on this rail loop and I think it's because the train stops and starts so often as they're loading the cars and you know when the slack is taken up there's quite a force on the couplers and uh, the train gets heavier and heavier as it gets loaded. So apparently these break all the time and then that causes the train to separate. Now here's a special announcement. I hope you're all listening to this. This series of mine has so far 80 chapters, but each chapter is a two-part really. So there's 160 of these videos already and they're dying. Nobody wants to watch them anymore. So I'm asking you now, do not send me any more items unless they're absolutely extraordinary because I still have two tubs here of items that I will run through and then call it a quits to this uh, What Is It series, which I think has run its course. And thank you for watching it and supporting me during that time.